Do you wish your veins looked more realistic or just better overall? Veining is a really great detail to add to your characters. Be it fantasy creatures or an infected look or even very subtle veining for old age makeups. I'm gonna give you some tips and insight on how to paint better veins using an airbrush and also doing some traditional brush work. If you look at the reference, there is a whole complex system, but don't let that overwhelm you. There's really only a few things you wanna keep in mind when veining and think lightning, not branches. Yeah, I know what you're thinking, Chris. If I look at my hand, if I look at my wrist, the veins are straight. What are you talking about? Lightning, that's, no. In certain areas, yeah, you're gonna wanna put less wiggling. The problem is straight lines don't look organic and it will pull the viewer's eye. So when incorporating veining in your look, you're gonna want that wiggling to break it up and make it look more natural. So for the veining, we're gonna be using Skin Illustrator. For those of you unaware, Skin Illustrator is an alcohol activated makeup designed to be used more like a wash so that it looks more organic and more set into the skin. Plus two, they already have a vein tone color and a capillary color. Let's start with the traditional brush method. For this, if you're painting larger veins, you're gonna want a larger brush, but even with your larger brush, or that it comes to a point, one of the important things is direction. Now veining based around the head, you're gonna wanna make sure that the veins are coming up into the face. I went really light and subtle with this, but depending on your character, you can be a little more heavy handed. Relax your grip and you're just doing little delicate little wiggles. So now that we've done the vein tone color, I'm gonna go in with a finer brush and I'm gonna use the capillary color. Just wanna make sure that you can get a really nice fine point. When adding in capillary, doing a more dramatic look, you're gonna wanna add more into the lower areas where the skin is thinner, like around the eyes, corners of the mouth, crooks of the nose. It's gonna look more organic the more chaotic it looks. And just remember, practice makes better. So just keep cracking at it. If it gets a little too dark, kinda tap the color down I'm gonna be using Skin Illustrator glazing gels just to kind of put a little color in some of these sunken areas that we have with all this veining. It really starts to give more of a sickly look and really kind of pushes the veins back and look like they're more under the skin. So now that we went through how to use a traditional hand painting method to create the veins, we're gonna go ahead and do the airbrush on this side. So you're still just wiggling like you did with the regular brush. You don't wanna be afraid to get really close to the skin. It might seem a little intimidating, especially if you're really new to airbrushing. Make sure that your air pressure's low. You're gonna wanna test it on a piece of paper just so you know what to expect when you go to paint. If you find yourself struggling with seeing where you're spraying, most airbrushes, you can remove this little front part. You can see the needle is exposed so if you do this so that you can see better and you just be careful because the needle is right there but you might find that it makes it a little easier you feel like you can see what you're doing and you can really get in there close and get those nice details Something like this happens, it's okay, don't panic. The thing with using an airbrush it is a machine once in a while it might do something you really don't expect take a torn sponge and I'm just gonna kinda break it up a little bit. Now for this, I don't have a base on, so I just use a little bit of alcohol on the sponge to bring up the color. If you do have a base color on, do the color that you have underneath the veining and you can lightly just kinda stamp and push those veins back. And I'm gonna use the same Skin Illustrator glazing gel. So as you can see, the two techniques really give you different results. I personally like to combine the two. You're the artist, so you can't go wrong with whatever technique you choose to do. If you're new to airbrushing or you just wanna up your airbrush game, I do have a playlist of tips and techniques to enhance your character makeups. 